Hi guys! In this video, we will test and review the Atom Stack X7 laser engraver. You want to know all the pros and cons of this machine? So stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. In our previous video, we unboxed and assembled the Atom Stack X7 laser engraver. If you missed it, don't forget to check the link in the video description. Today we will show you all the tests we have done and share our opinion about this machine. The X7 has an engraving area of 410 by 400 mm. Includes a control terminal with display which allows us to operate the engraver without the need of a computer. And a 5.5 watt ultrafine compression laser capable of cutting thicker materials making it great for engraving and cutting. But is this as good as it sounds? That's what we will find out. So, let's start by checking the electronics. Inside the electronic box, we can find a LaserBox ESP32 version 1.0 board. This board is equipped with a 32-bit ESP32 module. This module has Wi-Fi, but this laser engraver does not support this feature. The nicest feature of this engraver must be the control terminal with touch display. When turning the engraver on, the display has two options. Carve and setting. In setting, we can turn the sound when touching the screen on and off. And in about, we can check the engraving area and firmware version. This engraver allows working without the use of a computer. This means we can load a memory card with the G-codes in it and use the terminal to start the job. In Carve, you get the list of the files saved in the memory card. When selecting the file, you first get the screen with several buttons. There is the play button to start the job, the center button to move the laser to the center of the loaded design, the frame button to move the laser all around the area where the design will be created. The position button will define the start coordinate, which is normally the bottom left corner of the design. There's also the home button, the buttons to move each axis, and also the selection of the amount of steps for each movement. This is pretty handy, and it basically helps us to position the laser over the material we want to engrave more accurately. Before starting each job, we need to adjust the height of the laser so that it's at the correct focus distance. And to do that, place the small acrylic plate on the material we want to engrave, and loosen the laser module with a knob at the front. Lower the laser module until it touches the acrylic plate and tighten the knob. That's it! The laser should now be at the correct focus distance. It's also possible to adjust the height of the back plate where the laser is attached to, in case we want to use thicker or taller materials. To do that, we only need to unscrew the two screws that secure the plate and screw them back at any of the other positions available. Don't forget that every time you change the laser module's height or change between different material thicknesses, you need to always adjust the focus distance. Now for the tests. First we did some engravings on wood. As for software, we used Lightburn, but this engraver is also compatible with laser GRBL. Next, we tested engraving on white canvas. We also tested engraving on cork. And then we tested engraving on stone. And finally, 
we did some cutting tests. We first used a 3mm MDF wood to cut this design. The final test was to try and cut MDF and pine wood with different thicknesses. As for the results and for the wood engravings, this laser shows that it can engrave very well. The spot size is very small and it has lots of power, since we can see some areas that got a little burned. As for the white canvas, it shows also good and very defined lines. There's only a small defect near the left corner, but that might be caused by the canvas and not by the laser because the rest is impeccable. On cork, we see no issues whatsoever. It engraved very nicely. We can say the same for stone. This detailed design was engraved nicely. As for the cuts, we first used a 3mm MDF wood to cut this design. We made a few passes with a faster speed to avoid burning the wood too much. And even so, it shows signs of burning a little bit, especially on the smaller areas. Nevertheless, the result was okay. MDF is a very difficult material to cut, and for our tests, we used this 10mm thick one. With the faster speed, we did several passes, but it could only cut down to more or less 6 or 7 millimeters. A slower speed was also used and was able to cut a bit more, but the downside was that it also burned the top side of the wood. We then tested cutting a 10 millimeter thick pine wood. With this type of wood, the laser was able to cut it. Since the manufacturer advertises that this laser can cut up to 15 mm thick wood, we then tried cutting this 15 mm thick pine wood. This time the laser was not able to cut it through. While using an output power between 95 and 100 percent, we kept slowing the speed down in an effort to try and cut this through, but we didn't succeed. The lower the speed, the more damage we got on the wood. The laser module is in fact good, and it's one of the most powerful we tested so far. But the numbers that the manufacturer gives in the ads will not work for every kind of wood. Eventually, it will cut to 15 mm thick wood, but only if the wood is balsa, because it's a softer wood. So. And here are the pros and cons for the Atom Stack X7. And on the positive side, we have an easy and fast assembly, the easy and fast laser focus adjustment with the focus tool. The only downside is that the knob for adjusting the laser height moves the laser when locking. This might be because of the screw not being perfectly flat, causing the laser module to move up or down when tightening the knob. This makes the adjustment to be inaccurate or harder to set up. It can work without the need of a computer and includes a control terminal with touch display to help set the engraving area when working without the computer. This engraver is also equipped with a very nice emergency button to easily stop the machine if needed. And also includes and stops making the operation a bit easier. It has a nice engraving area of 410 by 400 millimeters, and it can be extended on the Y-axis up to 850 millimeters with their extension kit. The laser module is equipped with a good eye protection shield. However, it's recommended to use protection goggles on top of that, and they didn't include the goggles with the machine. The laser has a decent amount of power and good performance, but in some cases, like the one where we cut the 3mm MDF board, you need to set the cutting parameters just right, or maybe install an air assist to avoid burning the wood. The manufacturer stated that it can cut up to 15mm thick wood, 
but for this thickness, it can only cut balsa wood. And on the negative side, and on top of the ones we already mentioned, the main board uses an EXP32 module with Wi-Fi, but the firmware does not support this function. And also, the main board does not include safety features like gyroscope, flame detection, and so on. The metric scales on the X and Y axis were designed to be read through the carriages and there's a needle shape in there. This is actually a very positive feature because it allows accurate positioning of the axis. However, we place this on the negative side because although it's a nice feature, it might not be that easy to use. On the X axis, if you raise the laser module, the scale and needle cannot be seen anymore. For the Y axis and depending on how you do your cable management, the cable can also get in the way of the readings. The cable management on the Y axis is another negative point because the piece of cable that goes from the electronic box to the first separate motor is a bit short including the small wires that connect the Y-axis and stop switch. If the cable management of this part of the cable is not done right, it may eventually damage the wires when moving the Y-axis all the way back. So, what do you guys think about the X7 laser engraver from Adam Stack? Feel free to leave your comments down below. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time. Bye!